our first story is going to cover uh, what we've been covering on this channel for a while. We've been talking about Minneapolis. We've been talking about police brutality. We've been talking about what's going on, what community policing is. Yesterday's show uh, that I did, uh, the virtual live stand-up comedy show that I did, surrounded ideas. Uh, like we, really we, we discussed a lot of ideas about defunding the police, what ACAB means, why we have to defund the police, the history of policing, that sort of stuff. So uh, we, I've talked about it a lot. Those videos are going to be coming out in the next couple weeks. Uh, so if you're, if you're not tuned in to get uh, updates from me, please get, make sure that you get updates from me because we dive into a lot of information. This is specifically coming in terms of um, the, uh, uh, what the city council working, in, working with uh, Black Visions Collective and Reclaim the Block is, is planning on doing. Uh, now, the website that I read the story from uh, was, I believe, the American Military News, something along those lines. Uh, and um, the American Military News. Uh, and, and at first I was like, okay, maybe this is just sort of like, you know, what's going on with the military type shit. Uh, and it's, it's not, like it's a super, super right-wing site. And I can tell that they're super right-wing uh, because they call the... Uh, they, they call the, the protest riots. Like in the article that they're talking about, uh, this stuff is like, they call the protests riots. And I was like, oh yeah, you guys are, you guys are definitely fucking conservative as shit. Like you guys are bananas conservative. Uh, so I had to take that into account, but they did, what they did do is they did link the actual like, letter that they put out uh, about what they're going to do um, to transform law enforcement in Minneapolis. So uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, I've zoomed into this relatively large because, uh, because your boy's in his 30s, guys. Your boy's in his 30s. He's got to wear these sunglasses because uh, 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 he's getting old. And if he doesn't and he squints too much, uh, his eyeballs hurt, then he gets migraines. So your boys, your boys zoomed in as much as he can zoom in. Uh, to, <laughs> like, I think I maxed it out. I fucking maxed it out, you guys. They're just like, it won't go any further. Oh, no, I can do one more. Okay, uh, this might be a little bit closer than we need, but let's, we'll, we'll keep it here. Uh, I'm not going to read the whereas parts, uh, right? Because, because that's basically every paragraph starts with whereas, and I'm not sure why they have to do that, but I guess they have to do that. Um, it says, declaring the intent to create a transformative model of cultivating safety in our city. Police violence and excessive uh, use of excessive force have led to community destabilization, a decrease in public safety, and an exacerbation of racial inequalities in Minneapolis. And police use of force among, is among the leading cause of death for young men of color and black people, including black women, girls, queer, trans, and non-binary folks. Uh, disabled people, American Indians, immigrants, and Latinos are killed by the police at a disproportionately higher rates than their white peers. Uh, and the use of force by the Minneapolis Police Department exposes the city of Minneapolis to legal and financial vulnerability with settlements in excess of 24 million in the past three years. Uh, so that, that part right there, that, talk, that, is, that is one of the things that like um, the Minneapolis Police department's union president which is a lot of words basically the police union president in minneapolis uh that's one of the things he bitched about he was like oh they're talking about the defunding and they want to do all these things to the police and like don't they know like we're underpaid and we lose all this money to like settlements because we have to pay out you know off we have to pay off the people that that get killed by these officers with this bullshit and it's just like dude stop fucking murdering people like, do you think you can have a police department that doesn't illegally fucking murder people all the time? You know, like that, that isn't fucking trained to think that people with higher melanin in their skin are like dangerous. Maybe you shouldn't think that you're at war with your, with the people that you're supposed to protect dog, which you're not, that's not where policing comes from. Policing comes from slave patrols. So they are doing what they're actually designed to do, which is why proposals like this happen. But it's such a bullshit argument, right? To, to be like, well, we kill people on the streets and then we have to like pay money to the families and that's just i mean 
That's crazy, pay. That's crazy. That's like crazy. It's such a fucking bullshit crazy argument to me. All right. Uh, the University of Minnesota, the Minneapolis Park Board, and the Minneapolis School Board, uh, the Walker Minneapolis Institute of Art and Private Businesses have announced an end to their relationship and contracts with the Minneapolis Police Department in the past two weeks. Not only that, uh, but they were uh, the transport union in Minneapolis and in, in my city of Pittsburgh, too, and I think various other cities as well, uh, declined to bus protesters to prison. They also declined to bus cops to protests, which is awesome. And, the, and that, and there you go. There's a difference between a police union and a real union. Like, a real union was like, Fuck yeah, we stand behind you guys not carting people to prison for unnecessary and false charges and also not carting cops to protest to rubber bullet and tear gas innocent peaceful protesters and escalating the situation. And the police union is like, we, we shouldn't have to pay for things after we murder people, you guys. That's just mean. That's mean. That's mean pants fucking making us pay for illegal murder stuff. Like, that's the difference fucking between these two unions. So, I, I mean, the, nobody wants to work with the Minneapolis Police Department anymore because they, you know, uh, kill people. Chief uh, Madaria Aradondo, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, uh, has made good faith efforts within the existing system to improve public safety for all communities in Minneapolis and is a respected and integral reader in bringing forward this much needed transformation. The city of Minneapolis has taken many steps to reform the Minneapolis Police Department, including but not limited to the creation of civ a civilian oversight bodies, implicit bias, and de-escalation training for officers, prohibiting the warrior-style trainings, uh, prohibiting the types of hold that led to, George, uh, led to the death of George Floyd, adoption of a duty to intervene, uh, the addition of body cameras, uh, for all officers and many more. Yeah, I mean, the warrior style training should be gone. They should immediately stop looking at uh, civilians as the enemy combatant, right? Like, we, like, that was a Nixon thing. This whole, like, starting a war, the war on drugs, the war on crime, basically the war on civilians, the war on black communities, the war on immigrants, the war on, like, we have this war attitude, hence the warrior style trainings, and, and cops are just kind of programmed to think that they're at war, that this is some kind of a war, and it's not. That's not what policing is. And getting, I mean, things like chokeholds should be fucking, that should not even be anywhere near your fucking training thing. You should not be using any of that sort of stuff, right? And even then, what's, what's really going to come out of this is, like, now that they've, they have a civilian oversight board, and nobody that serves in the police should be on the civilian oversight board, uh, de-escalation training and, and really like what, what you should do to who you should call in certain situation. Um, so I'm hoping that that, that, that is kind of the direction that they go once they start implementing these things. The city of Minneapolis is invested in public health and community safety beyond policing strategies, including evidence-based violence prevention programs like Next Step and invested in community-based safety programs, innovative diversion and domestic violence programs in our city attorney's office and the establishment of uh, the Office of Violence Prevention to coordinate this work. The city of Minneapolis established a 911 work group to analyze 911 dispatch categories and determine whether there are opportunities to expand the city's ability to respond to those calls beyond the Minneapolis Police Department, which generated 50 ideas and six recommendations to pursue and is continuing its work uh, this year by prototyping new responses to mental health calls and reporting and further explore 911 call options beyond the Minneapolis Police Department. Yeah, when you call 911, like, they shouldn't defer to the cops. Like, that's what, I mean, you, the cops did not need to get called for Rayshard Brooks. Period. That dude was drunk at a drive through Call the paramedics, make sure his blood alcohol level isn't at, like, a poison state, and then call one of his, like, call one or two of his buddies to pick his ass up and take him home. Put him in bed. Get him a glass of water. Put two Advils by his by his bed. 
the last time I was in Muncie, uh, Muncie, Indiana, um, the owner of Be There Now, Whitney, is 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 a great person. Uh, I enjoy his company very much. Whitney is Whitney is a great great dude to kind of hang out with and talk to and stuff. And uh, and 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 Whitney Whitney will buy you booze, and he buys me booze, and I'm I'm a little I'm a bit of a lightweight. Uh, and you know, his, he, he has a place for artists to stay in, and his house is maybe two blocks from, uh, the venue. And, uh, and when we got there, you know, I didn't drive there. Uh, we got to his house and he, you know, was like, Hey, you're going to feel this shit in the morning and left a big ass glass of water and two Advils. And then he gave me one Advil and was like, take this so you don't suffer in the morning. Fucking, that's what we need for drunk people. That's it. We don't need cops called on them. Cops that are going to spend 45 minutes with them, determine that they're drunk, and they shoot them in the back. That's fucking nuts. That doesn't make any sense. How does that make sense? How does that make sense? It doesn't. So those 911 calls should reroute to different departments. And, you know, call an ambulance. That ambulance gets there, make sure that he's okay have somebody that knows how to deal with drunk people there and then call one of his friends to get him home or to their friend's house, whatever it might be. You know, that's what those emergency contacts are for. You know, like those emergency contacts are like, there, there should be an option on your, on your iPhone. There should be an option uh, that, that says drunk emergency. You know, like who, who's your, who's your go-to person in a drunk emergency? And, you know, they look at that and they go, okay, we call, we call, you know, Ricky or Jennifer or whoever the fuck. And they come and pick you up and take you home. The adopted 2020 budget allocated $193 million to the Minneapolis Police Department, which represents over 36% of the city's general fund of $532.3 million. And it's twice as much as the combined budget's for workforce development, building affordable housing, ownership, uh, home ownership support, small business support programs, uh, environmental sustainability, race, equity, arts, culture, violence prevention, family, and uh, early childhood support, youth development, senior services, uh, lead poisoning prevention, infectious disease prevention, and protection of civil rights, which, which is basically saying, hey, we're cool with using military force to fix all of those problems. Like, if, if there's lead poisoning problem, cool, let's use military force for it. If there, is there an infectious disease problem? Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Let's do the military thing first. And it's like, that's not what we need. It, it, we need to reallocate all this stuff. You know, compartmentalize these duties. Uh, the murder of George Floyd on May 25th, 2020, by Minneapolis police officers is a tragedy that shows no amount of reforms will prevent lethal violence and abuse by some members of the police department against members of the community, especially black people and people of color. There have been several ideas of reform that have been tried uh, and, uh, and they don't work. It's unfortunate, it sucks, but it, they don't work. And now it's time to move forward from them, which, which look, and this is like, the reason why this seems so radical is because like 20 years ago, if we were like, hey, we should tra change the training courses, for police, it seems like that's leading to a lot of violence. And then we fucking did. And then we were like, oh, by the way, if they like do one of these moves, like choke holes that are banned that shouldn't be used by the cops, then these cops should go to prison. And then we did that. And it's like, oh, by the way, like they're still kind of getting violent. They're still shooting people on the streets. Maybe we should look in like, but nobody did any of that sort of shit. So now we're asking for all of it because it's like, it's like, 50 fucking years of doing nothing. So this is like, there's everybody's like, oh my God, it's so radical. And it's just like, it's not radical because we haven't done any of this shit. Like we presented reforms and you ignored them. Okay. George Floyd was not the only person killed by the Minneapolis police, but joins a tragically long list of names, including uh, Tysel Nelson. If I mispronounce any of these names, I'm very, very sorry. Uh, Tyson Nelson, Barbara Schneider, Fong Lee, David Cornelius Smith, Terrence Franklin, Jamar Clark, Justine Riz, Riznik Demond, Thurman Blevins, Travis Jordan, Sh Chasser Fong Vu, and others. 
Again, if I mispronounce any of those names, I'm super, super sorry. Uh, if you know how to pronounce them, feel free to leave a comment phonetically saying how to, it said phonetically, you know, organizing how to say those names. Uh, I don't like mispronouncing people's name. It's like, I, I've, I've had it done to me all my life. Even when I shorten my name, it still happens, you know, so I, I try not to mispronounce people's name. Uh, the murder of George Floyd set off a wave of protests and uprisings across the country, across the United States and across the world and has led thousands of voices asking for change. Now, therefore, re be it resolved by the city council of the city of Minneapolis that the city council will commence a year-long process of community engagement, research, and structural change to create a transformative new model for cultivating safety in our city. Boom. You wanted to know what the fuck defunding the police actually looks like? Then here we go. This is, we're, we're doing it. We're in the process of it in Minneapolis and other cities should be picking up on this shit. We need to start doing this uh, all over the place, right? Like Pittsburgh just celebrated, uh, uh, I think it was uh, two years ago that Antoine Rose was killed and that cop is like, you know, fucking desk duty or whatever. Daniel Pantaleo killed Eric Garner, I want to say five or six years ago. I might be wrong about the dates. Um, it's definitely been six years since Mike Brown, um, and where is Darren Wilson, the officer that killed him? Where's Daniel Pantaleo? Are they fired? Are they in prison? They're not. They're fucking pushing papers. That's not, you know, that's not, that reform is bullshit. Uh, the city council will come into, so yeah, so we read that part. Okay, um, be it further resolved that the city council will engage with every willing community member in Minneapolis centering the voices of black people, American Indian people, people of color, immigrants, victims of harm, and uh, stakeholders who have historically marginalized or underserved by our present system. Together, we will identify what safety looks like for everyone. Resolved uh, uh, that the process will, be, will, will center the role of healing and reconciliation. The process will require healers, elders, youth artists, and organizers to help uh, to, to lead deep community engagement on race and public safety. We will work with local and national leaders on transformative justice in partnerships informed uh, informed by the needs of every single block. Yeah, so it all kind of boils down to like what each community needs and then allocating the funds on, on these community-based levels rather than, oh, the whole city needs to be protected. Let's just, let's just get guys with guns on steroids with military training from the Mossad. Uh, which is where the chokehold came from. Uh, okay. Uh, be, be further resolved that decades of police reform efforts have not created equitable public safety in our community and our efforts to, trans, uh, to achieve transformative public safety uh, will not be deterred by the inertia of existing inter institutions, contracts, and legislation. Uh, these efforts heated by the words of Angela Davis. In a racist society, it is not enough to be non-racist, we must be anti-racist. There is a difference between that. Um, you know, it's not just enough to say, oh, I'm not racist, I have Black Lives Matter t-shirt, that's pretty cool. What, what else are you doing? Are you educating people? Are you engaging in discourse? Are you engaging in discussions? When you see, you know, these sort of racist elements in our society, may it be small, may it be large, are you speaking out about it? Are you, uh, you know, uh, uh, are, are you, are, are you, in, you know, engaging in dialogue or w what are you doing to combat this notion of racism in your society? Again, be it small or large, right? It's, it's not just enough to be like, well, I have black friends. Cool. So do I like, but I don't, I make sure that those, like my black friends are not victims of white supremacy, you know? And when they are, I fucking do like, I have to say something about it. I will say something about it. Be further resolved that tr the transformation under consideration has citywide impact and will be conducted by city council in a spirit of collaboration and transparency with all constructive stakeholder contributors, including the mayor's office, the police chief, Hennepin County, and the Minnesota Department of Human Rights. Uh, be f uh, further resolved the city council hereby creates the future of community safety work group. To include staff from the Office of Violence Prevention, the Department of Civil Rights, the city, the city's co office, coordinator's office, in coordination with the uh, 911 working group, the Division of Race and Equity, Neighborhood and Community Relations, 
and other departments. So one, report back to the council by July 24, 2020, with the said preliminary rec recommendations for engaging with specific cultural sta and stakeholder groups, the community at large, and relevant experts that can partner with the uh, city to help Minneapolis trans transition into a transformative model for cultivating community uh, safety, including budget resource, uh, resource needs estimate for the process, and regular reports to city council uh, development and present strategies for building a new model for cultivating c community safety, building on acknowledgement the the work of the Poli Police Conduct Oversight Commission, the Office of Violence Pre Pre Prevention, the Audit Community, uh, and the 9-11 Work Group, and the community-based organizations, uh, including but not limited to intermediate policy changes, investment partnerships to create public health approach to community safety and support alternatives to policing, research and engagement to inform the potential creation of a new city department of community safety with a holistic approach to community safety, including a review and analysis of relevant existing models and programs and practices that could be applied, recommendations that advance the work of 911 working group and other strategies for transition uh, of the Minneapolis Police Department to alternative and more appropriate responses to community requests for identifying um, work in the city, other agencies, community partners while working to create a new public safety systems in progress. Recommendations for additional community safety strategies that build upon existing work across the city enterprise that approaches public safety through a public health lens. Boom. Uh, so this is like a mission statement is basically what it is. It's a bit of a mission statement. Um, it, it, it's basically saying this is what our plan is, right? This is how we're going to approach stuff like this. Uh, we are, we, we're not taking it willy-nilly. We are being serious about what's going on out there. And it's not something, like, I hate, I hate this notion where conservatives come out and they're just like, well, we're just, we're just going to get uh, fucking, what are you going to do when you, you, we got an emergency situation? It's like, yeah, the emergency situation, real emergency situations, yeah. If there's like a home invasion, somebody waving a gun around, you know, threatening your life, uh, what have you, yes, we'll call the police. But for a mental health situation, domestic stuff, you know, like a person sleeping at a fucking drive through no, we don't fucking need the police in, in, to, to be anywhere near that situation. We just don't. Um and yes, it's going to take a little while to implement this because this is something new. This is something different. So give it the time that it needs. Clearly, people are taking it relatively seriously. Uh, there, there isn't people that are just like, okay, cops are done now. Everybody's going to be fine. Like, no, there is an oversight committee and it's all going to take some planning. It's all going to take some transition. And if these government officials aren't going to work with us, then the community is going to push back against the government officials. Uh, you know, Jacob Fry got booed out of a fucking protest, you guys, for saying that he wasn't going to be on board with this stuff, that he wanted to push some other kind of like, you know, bullshit softball reform. That's not what we need. We need true radical substantive change. And this is the start of true radical substantive change. And yes, it's going to take a little while. And yes, you're going to be bumps in the road, but those bumps are going to be worth it because there'll be less of us dead in the fucking streets. Hey folks, uh, thank you so much for checking out this, uh, this video. Thank you very much for tuning into this channel. If you enjoyed the video, uh, if you like what you see here, please give it a thumbs up and share this out with whoever you think would benefit from this. Share it with your friends, your family, your enemies, whoever you think needs to, to, to watch uh, content like this. And uh, I'm also gonna be doing uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows via Zoom. Uh, called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Shows. Their tickets are available for those right now. Uh, you got to get your tickets, and, and, and you got to get them as soon as you possibly can uh, for two reasons. One, that's how I'm going to be able to communicate the login information to you guys. That way we don't have any unwanted visitors showing up in the, uh, in the virtual theater, the Zoom virtual theater. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm just one man, and it's very difficult to keep track of uh, a bunch of different people that I need to give tickets out to. So uh, that's how I'm going to be able to communicate the, the login information as efficiently as possible. 
The second reason to get them quickly too is because they're limited spots uh, and half the ticket sales are going to help a uh, grassroots organization, venue, journalist, uh, and so on and so forth. Every, every single week it's a brand new show and every single week we have a brand new grassroots organization or venue or journalist or, uh, that uh, we are going to be donating half those ticket sales to. So um, if you want to be a part of that, uh, please get those tickets as soon as you can. And uh, you can you can make a one-time donation, you can or you can become a sustaining member uh, by going to my website krishmohan.com as well k r i s h m o h a n dot com. Uh, you can uh, you can become a sustaining member via Patreon uh, over Bandcamp or directly on my website. That gets you free tickets to some of these live virtual stand-up comedy shows. It gets you unreleased stand-up comedy material. It gets early access to uh, my web series, Fork Full of Noodles, the extended big long episodes of, of that. Um, you also get, if you miss a Citizen Revolution show, don't, we got you. We're, we'll, we put those up for our patrons and uh, our sustaining members to check out. So. I hope you guys can, uh, if you if you have the ability to make a donation, you do. If you have the ability to become a sustaining member, that you do. But the important thing is to make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this stuff because content like this often doesn't get shown to the maximum number of people. So I depend very much on you guys to get the word out there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the people that do tune in, uh, that have become patrons, that have made donations, that buy these tickets. You guys are fucking awesome. Uh, it's it's sure as hell helping me out, uh, uh, you know, in in this tough time, and uh, and it's helping me continue produce these shows uh, at the at a, at a higher quality than um, than before, and and keep pushing uh, to create to create these these videos to the best of uh, to the best of my ability, and add you know the the, the cooler bells and whistles to it. Um, I'm the only person that works on these shows. I'm I'm doing all this stuff. So uh, every every little bit, every every sustaining member and every ticket sale totally, totally fucking helps out. Um, and I appreciate the hell out of it. Thanks so much. And we'll see you at the next video. Bye.